average household has at least 50 appliances that are used either all the time or hardly at all. So how do you know if the plugs are still sound and safe? Here's Joe. At this time of year, 79-year-old Iris Bloxham admits she becomes a creature of habit, reaching for stored appliances and bringing them to the fore. But what about safety checks? You just don't get to um, round to doing these things, well, you just don't think, I suppose. But today, Iris has enlisted the help of test and tag technician Mike Hawkins, who will go through her appliances at home. So the main things for today, Iris, are we're going to be checking the appliances you're going to be using in winter. Mike will visually and electronically test several of Iris's daily use winter appliances, including her fan heater, toaster, bedroom bar heater and hair dryer. The results of Mike's testing will bring this reaction from Iris. I just can't believe it. I just can't believe it. You know, that it was certainly a shock. We'll come back to see which two of her appliances failed the safety test. But first, a familiar winter warning from our fireys. And people need to be aware that they have to clean and maintain their appliances and also carry out safety checks. The fact is, the months of June to August accounted for half of our region's fire-related fatalities last year. But this year, there's a fresh electrical warning for anyone even slightly affected by the recent downpour. Any doubt that an appliance has got wet over this summer period, it's best to throw it out. It's something Karen Gray fortunately doesn't have to worry about, but she does have other concerns. First, is it OK to plug a heater into a power board? I'd actually recommend if you can get away with it, don't use a power board with a, with a heater. Heat generating appliances can quickly overload, says Jared Pointing from the Electrical Safety Office. He also has some advice about poorly stored items, like this popcorn maker. Yeah, you've got the, uh, the cord actually inside the appliance. Now, depending on, on what's on top of there, we could get some weight on that and you could end up with a damaged cord. Stored like this any longer, Karen's grill will look like it's gone a few rounds with George Foreman. Looks like you've stored it with the, uh, the cord inside. OK, that's not a good idea. Obviously, there's a fair bit of weight in this. Now, back with Iris. Technician Mike is using a machine which creates a false error in the device and gauges how effectively it responds. This well-stored old fan heater gets a tick and is tagged with the date of when the next test is due. A fan heater um, should be checked in the home every two years. Into the kitchen, Iris's toaster is in the spotlight with a simple visual check first that anyone can perform. And I'm looking to see if there's any burn marks in the cord because obviously they get quite warm. Then a check for wire insulation. And we do that by putting 500 volts through the lead and then if it doesn't get 500 volts back then we know there's a problem. The toaster gets a tick. In the bedroom, the connections to Iris's bar heater look good to the eye, but... Mm. The insulation's failed on this one. Oh, goodness. No longer safe to use, Iris either needs to get it rewired or throw it out. So, Iris, had you have not had this checked, this could potentially have, have been dangerous for you. Into the bathroom and it's Iris's 15-year-old hairdryer that has some split ends. And this is something that you should never use again. Oh, goodness. As you can oh, see... Oh, dear, I didn't notice that before. There you are. That's obviously no. very dangerous. No. And um, that would be a fail straight away. Wet hands and a hairdryer with exposed cords is a recipe for disaster. It's better to be shocked now, Iris, than to, to be really shocked tomorrow, maybe. Oh God, yes. I, yeah. I just so can't believe that. Yeah, if you miss one thing, it could be the one thing that's faulty. So, once you've tested all your appliances, next on your winter checklist is the safety switch. Jared, what do we do here? Joe, we, we look for the button, the test button, or the switch with the test button on it, and then we press it, like that, and that's tripped, which is perfect, and then we turn it back on. Take the time to check your electrical appliances. Mm, certainly worth the effort, isn't it? Now let's